um hi all um now in this session we are going to discuss the adhesive bonding process uh, sometimes this is referred as adhesive joining also so adhesive bonding or adhesive joining processes so basically this is uh, in simplest terms we can say this is just like you are uh, pasting or sticking something using a glue in between them for example you are pasting some paper paste some metal parts using glue very basically adhesive bonding bonding can be compared to that so uh, you can say adhesive bonding process of joining materials in which an adhesive is placed between the fraying surface of the components called adherence so basically this process means joining the two materials using a adherent that is that holds the material together and most importantly you the point you have to note down is in this case the metallurgical bond does not take place to the surface being joined okay so now the adhesive or the adherent may be a cement or a glue or it can be a paste lot for a lot of commercial forms of adhesives are available these are only some examples you have discussed so using any kind of this type of agents if you are joining two materials that is referred as adhesive bonding or adhesive joining so basically in this process the adhesive that is in the form of a liquid or a tacky solid is placed between the surfaces to be joined after placing this adhesive this uh, material is heated sometimes pressure is applied or sometimes heat or pressure or is applied after some time of application and heating or giving force the joint will be obtained um, and this material this process can be used for dissimilar materials but the processing temperature is important here the adhesive joining usually is done if the processing temperature is between 65 to 175 degrees celsius <clears throat> so now you can see the schematic representation of adhesive bond the workpiece a and workpiece a b that is to be joined in this case then you can say when you are applying the adhesive in between the workpieces a and b there will be adhesive film and there will be one weak interfacial layer will be there so in the adhesive bond the bond is actually caused either by the polar forces between the adhesive and the material that is referred as oxide film of course or the uh, van der Waal forces between the adhesive and the unfilmed clean metals here the oxide film refers sometimes or most of the times there can be different oxide films present on the metal surfaces or material surfaces especially when it is a metal so if any oxide film is there there can be polar forces between adhesive and the oxide films otherwise the joint can be or the bond can be due to the van der Waals force between the clean metal and the adhesive um, then uh, uh, the adhesive when you are placing the adhesive between two surfaces the adhesive molecules are attracted by neighboring molecules the neighboring molecules will be of course of uh, the metal atom and that is how the bond is being take place so again I am stressing there is no metallurgical bond is created only this type of polar or van der Waals bonding is happening now if you are going to the classification of adhesives there can be uh, two types of adhesives structural and non-structural adhesives so structural adhesives it is mainly used in structure structural purposes uh, in many applications and non-structural means the day-to-day -day life uh, adhesive processes we can refer as non-structural adhesives but compared to the non-structural, the structural adhesives may be providing uh, better strength and bond strength and uh, all the things. The again, again, uh, the 
structural structural adhesives can be uh, thermo setting or thermoplasting type and uh, one more point uh, we have to stress is the adhesive is composed of basically a resin will be there then an elastomer will be there and a flexibilizer or inorganic material will be there so a resin along with the resin elastomer will be there and a flexibilizer will be there in every type of adhesive then the thermoplastic adhesives and the thermo setting adhesives the most commonly used type of thermoplastic adhesives you can see polyamides vinyls non vulcanizing neoprene rubber all the uh, thermoplastic adhesives but thermo setting resins usually or most commonly the resins are formed or the adhesives are formed using thermo setting resins and these are hardened or cured by chemical reactions such as polymerization uh, if you are using thermo setting it can be remelted and it can be used further so again these slides uh, gives you some explanations regarding the chemistry behind the adhesives uh, th there are different types of resins that is epoxy resins uh, nowadays the time epoxy is very much popular uh, regarding the flooring the painting sector like that this is a resin based on epoxy epoxy based resin uh, epoxy resin if you are comparing these are the newer thermo setting or newer class of resins excellent properties they have um, low shrinkage high tensile strength toughness and chemical inertness so as i hold we can say nowadays epoxy resins are very much uh, used for the adhesive joint processes now the joint design for adhesive bonding while designing the joint using adhesive bonding the most consideration is the type of load acting on the service part that means uh, after you are joining the materials what load is acting on the material so that is the main design criteria of the adhesive joints so you can see the different loadings are tensile loading shear loading cleavage loading and peel loading all these loading will be experienced in structural applications so according to this load what load is acting you have to uh, design the joint ac accordingly again these are the different types of loading acting tensile you can see the cleavage uh, what we have discussed in the earlier slide that you can more clearly understand here the tensile the cleavage the shear and the peel applications now this is one of the important rules for designing an adhesive joint there are three important points that you have to note down this is very much important first point the joint should preferably subjected to shear or tensile rather than cleavage or peel loading as far as possible you have to avoid cleavage or peel loading and mostly preferably it should subject to shear and tensile then the second point or important rule is the static loading of the joint should not exceed the adhesive plastic strain capacity every adhesive is having a plastic strain capacity that means it can deform plastically to a limit basically and the loading should not exceed this limit of the adhesives otherwise the joint will fail and the third rule is uh, adhesive joints subjected to low cyclic load should be provided with sufficient overlap to minimize creep in adhesives so that means uh, sufficient overlap is very much important whenever you are designing the uh, adhesive joining adhesive joint sufficient overlap should be provided so the three important rule is first one is uh, as far as possible prefer shear or tensile load then the plastic strain capacity of that uh, adhesive should be minded then 
the sufficient overlap should be given so these are the three important roles regarding the design of adhesive joint now we will discuss some uh, common joints that is uh, possible by the adhesive joints so the it says the adhesive perform best when loaded in shear <coughs> so now you can see the conventional lap joint then the joggle lap and double lap and the darkened black color indicated is the adhesive applying between the parts now this light shows the effect of overlap length on shear strength in double shear lap joint so the above figure shows the double shear lap joint basically it is a lap joint and it is double lap joint then on both ends plates will be provided and adhesive layers you can see and the shear load is applying and the based on the overlap you can see the plastic zone and transition zone so now these are again uh, the different overlapping uh, uh, for a constant load how it is affected by the overlap so three types of overlap is being discussed here that is a short overlap medium overlap and a long overlap so there is a variation of shears as you can see then this is a single lap joint is most commonly used type and adequate for many applications but here this is, this is beveled lap joint that reduces strain at the edge so uh, if you are going for an adhesive joining process uh, apart from the conventional lap joints here the beveled lap joint is used the point is that reduces the strain at the edges so you can slightly modify the design according to our uh, purpose Now these are the different uh, configurations of bud joints shown. Uh, you can see some of the bud joints. The normal bud joint is very poor in the case of adhesive bonding, but um, double butt lap. You can see the third one on the left side, double butt lap. That is an excellent joint configuration. So uh, for this particular joint, adhesive joining, every bud joint will not give the perfect bone strength but and now we will discuss the steps in adhesive bonding uh, namely there are four steps that is preparing the surface application of adhesives the assembly of the uh, joint and curing the joint now preparing the surface basically means cleaning the surface uh, and make it proper for the joint for the cleaning you can adopt uh, different methods for example metal surfaces may be cleaned by chemical etching or by mechanical abrasion uh, if it is steels it can be short blasted that is to remove the rust if any there and the uh, mill scales then it is degreased um, and for high chromium materials you can go for chemical etchings uh, then if it is a glass it can be easily cleaned with a 30 percent hydrogen peroxide solution that is depending upon the material you are using uh, you can go for different uh, cleaning processes the adhesive bonding is not only used for metals but uh, many material can be joined using this and once it is cleaned you can go for a testing using water um, if the water is spreading very smoothly it is indication that surface is chemically clean and the water is collected as collection of droplets that indicate the possibility of oil filling so that are the things regarding the preparation of the sub surface now application of the adhesive is another important uh, factor because that is a crucial element um, it can be applied by using hand or you can go for brushing or spraying now the thickness of applied adhesives there are two times uh, is referred for the thickness that is lay down and the glue line thickness say for example the entire thickness of the adhesive is not applied in uh, one pass that is uh, the glue line thickness is the entire thickness that you are uh, uh, adding by different lay downs in one lay down one particular thickness will be applied and layer by layer you are achieving the entire thickness that is the glue line thickness though the next line give you the example now the lay down thickness that is depends upon the porosity and smoothness of the surface to be joined so if it is more porous you have to reduce the uh, lay down thickness um, 
then another method is the redox bonding uh, it is an advanced bonding procedure in which the metal is first given a coat of phenol formaldehyde uh, with a suitable solvent uh, then some formaldehyde powder is scattered over the pre-coated surface because they are before they are brought in together the and cured uh, so that is the application regarding this you have to keep in mind two times lay down and glue line thickness now after the application of the adhesives the joint or the mat uh, materials to be joined has to be assembled um, uh, so before drying down the adhesive that is referred as the tacky condition when the adhesive is in the tacky and wet uh, enough to adhere they have to assemble the components if you are giving more time to assemble the adhesives will uh, fastly dry down don't allow for that uh, that means the optimum consistency that is the important time at the optimum consistency you have to assemble the part then after the assembly you have to allow some time for the joint to settle down and that is known as the curing time so it is the process of maintaining adequate pressure during the curing time you have to give adequate pressure if it is necessary in some cases less pressure needed in some cases you have to hold the joint firmly that is more pressure uh, so generally a clamping pressure as uh, the adherence can without being crushed that is without crushing the adherence you have to give the clamping force so normal pressure range is uh, 0 to 1 to 10 mba is applied for suitable purposes and if his complex parts are placed in plastic bag which is then evacuated allowing atmospheric pressure to apply the clamping force that is the parts is kept in plastic bag then it, it is evacuated so that the atmospheric pressure is applied so that are the four uh, important steps in the adhesive bonding process that is a preparation of surface uh, application of adhesives assembly and curing the joint so now they are after the application of process the surplus adhesive is heated through the cooling cycle preferably in an oven so now the curing period is about 30 minutes at 145 degree through shorter times at high temperature may be applicable that is you can slightly vary the curing time uh, now if it is most of the phenolic based structural adhesives require high curing time so these particular based structural materials uh, needs high curing time in the range of 150 to 205 degree for curing periods of 30 minutes to 2 hours that means the curing time varies according to the uh, process now we can see the different applications the bonding of metal to non-metals especially plastic then industries involved with aircraft and automobile construction. Then some typical application include fastening of stiffness to aircraft skin. Then uh, fabrication of aircraft wing. Uh, in automobile you can see industry, this is one familiar example, attaching the brake lining to the shoes. You, you may be familiar with this while replacing the brake lining. Uh, the liner is uh, attached to the shoes using adhesive joining technique. So, by this example you may be familiar uh, with this process then the fabrication of railway coaches boats refrigerators so in every sector you can go for the adhesive bonding or adhesive joining operation so, so that is regarding the adhesive joining uh, processes the important uh, joint configurations the procedure all you can see here so that is it